Hi, I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and this is the Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course. In this lesson, we're going to go over all kinds of tools that you can use for sculpting. And if you're looking to really up your game, we're going to go over how to make your own tools for sculpting. There's an unlimited amount of potential instruments, implements, gadgets, doodads, thingamajiggers. <sighs> There's a lot that can be used as sculpting tools. The first tools that we have at our disposal are these babies. Our hands and fingers. Before looking at any other tools, it's important to first develop the ability to model the clay using our hands. The hands are the quickest way to shape the clay. You know it's true because it rhymes. Using our hands and fingers will help us develop a limberness and sensitivity to the surface of the sculpture that's difficult to replicate with any other tool. You should use your hands to sculpt whenever it is possible. Depending on the size of the sculpture and the hardness of the clay, we may need to develop some more strength in our hands. We can then use other tools when the soft rounded tips of our fingers are unable to create the level of detail or surface texture that we want. Usually this comes after all of the mass of the sculpture is already in place. Though you might be surprised just how detailed you can get using just your hands once you've had some practice. Okay, now let's look at some different types of tools. These types of tools will help us with all our cutting, scraping, shaping, uh, texturing, and smoothing needs. Loop tools are often used for trimming pottery and are great for scraping away clay from the surface of the sculpture. By scraping the loop tool against the surface, we can remove thin strips of clay. These tools can be made from a single wire or two wires twisted together or metal strips that have been bent into looped shapes. Wires twisted together will create a texture as you sculpt. A similar effect can be achieved with the metal strips by cutting small ridges into the edge to create a texture while scraping the surface of the clay. This is called a rake tool. Wood modeling tools. Wood tools usually are made out of a hard wood which helps them last longer and makes them less likely to break as you're sculpting. I recommend purchasing a cheap set of these tools online. These will not be made out of hardwood, but they will allow you to test out a variety of shapes. If you find a tool you love, you can purchase a more expensive but higher quality version of that same tool online. Or if you're really ambitious, you can carve your own using a hardwood like black walnut or this one in red heart wood. Scrapers. Scrapers can be made from wood, a thin sheet of metal, or plastic, and are used as the name suggests to scrape the surface of the sculpture with the edge of the tool. They are often oval or rectangular in shape, and sometimes the edge is ridged to create a texture as you sculpt. Pellet knives come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, and typically have a flexible steel blade at the end. They are commonly used for mixing paints, but can also be used for applying or removing clay. I prefer to use butter knives, which are more rigid and can be used to cut the clay, draw lines on the surface, or create planes with the flat of the blade. Wax carving tools. Wax carving tools are usually made of stainless steel and also come in a variety of useful shapes. The strength of the metal allows for more variation in the tips because there is less risk of the tool bending or breaking. This can help when working on hard areas. I purchased a set of 12 double-sided tools for around $15. Dental tools can be used as well. These can help when working in those hard-to-reach areas. Sculpting tools come in a wide range of prices, and I recommend purchasing some of the cheaper tools first. Every time I purchase sculpting tools, I try all of them, and then I find my favorite one or maybe two out of 10, and the others I almost never use. In addition, some of the cheap tools can be modified to last longer and behave more like the expensive ones. Texture stamps. Texture stamps are another useful tool which saves time since you don't have to create each mark individually. We will go over how to make your own texture stamps from polymer clay and silicone in the lesson on texturing the surface of your sculpture. Okay, now we're ready to take our life into our own hands and make some of our own sculpting tools. I don't know many sculptors that haven't made or modified at least a few of their own sculpting tools. And making tools for sculpture doesn't need to be expensive. Sometimes the ones that you build for yourself are better than the expensive ones. 
In the previous lesson, we went over some objects that you probably already have lying around that can work as improvised sculpting tools. But knowing how to make your own tools is a great skill for any sculptor. Let's look at how to make our own loop tools using a ballpoint pen, a paper clip, some two-part epoxy, and our pliers with wire cutters. I found that this brand of pen called Basic Prima Medium works best, but other types of ballpoint pens can be used as well. The pen consists of a stopper at the back end, a plastic tube that encloses the pen, a removable cap, and a plastic piece that holds the pen in place. We can set aside the small tube with the ink and ballpoint. We can use that as a replacement when other pens run out of ink. Waste not, want not. We also won't be using the end cap at the back of the pen. So the parts that we are keeping are the body of the pen, called the barrel, and the grip piece which holds the ballpoint pen in place. Let's take apart another pen to make a Darth Maul lightsaber type tool, with a tool on each end. Much cooler. Next is the tool bit. For this, we will use a thick paper clip so it won't bend unintentionally while we're sculpting. Let's shape the paper clip that will become the loop part of this loop tool. For one end, I will use the natural rounded shape of the paper clip. For the other end, let's be a little bit more creative. If you need some inspiration, just Google loop tools for sculpture and look at the images of all the different shaped loop tools that sculptors use. I'm going to go for something like this tool that has a rounded side, a sharp angle, and a straight side. For shaping the tool, a wooden dowel or some other type of rounded object may come in handy for bending the wire to the shape you desire. But if you don't have that, just take your time and do the best to shape it with the pliers. Once we have the shape that we want, let's cut off the excess wire from the tool, leaving about one half to three quarters of an inch of wire that allows us to epoxy the tool in place. Make sure that the paper clip fits well into the grip part of the pen. Now we can mix a bit of epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy that stays workable for about five minutes. I'm going to mix a small amount with the tip of the discarded cap of the pen. Before adding the paper clip tool bit, I'm going to carefully add some epoxy to the opening of the pen. To help the epoxy flow a little bit further, we can provide a small amount of suction on the opposite end. Not too much, just enough to let the epoxy flow down into the bit. Once there is some epoxy, we can push the paper clip in and repeat the process by adding a little more epoxy around the top of the bit and letting it flow down the pen. Make sure that the epoxy is covering a good amount of the ends of the paper clip. If the epoxy flows down too far, you can turn the tool upside down and let it flow back towards the paper clip. I'm going to set this one aside by placing it in some clay to work on the other. Don't set the tool aside, until the epoxy has stopped flowing. We can set it upright to let the epoxy flow lower into the bit, or upside down so the epoxy stays at the end by the opening. Keep an eye on it the whole time while the epoxy is setting. You can check how liquid the epoxy is with any leftover epoxy and the cap of the pen you used to mix it. Now we can repeat the process with the other bit that will go on the other side of the tool. You can remove and exchange the ends of these loop tools but what I prefer to do is epoxy them into the pen so that they don't shift around while I'm sculpting. And there you have it, one loop tool. You can also use two-part epoxy to strengthen cheaper loop tools and make sure the tool bits don't loosen over time. I've done this to all the loop tools I own. If you're interested in a more sturdy version of the loop tool, I recommend checking out Sculpture Geek's YouTube video on how he makes his version of this loop tool using brass piping. Zoe Defour has also taught how she makes her tools in her masterpiece demo at proco.com slash Defour. The premium course has 3D models, assignment demos, assignment examples, and much more. So check that out at proco.com slash sculpture. Don't be a tool. Share this video with your friends, and I'll see you in the premium course.